Welcome to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman, the podcast dedicated to helping you build the business of your dreams and live the life you always hoped for, with valuable and fun tips and info to make your life easier and more fun. And now, here's your host, a man who sprinkles metal shavings on his breakfast cereal just for fun, Jason Silverman. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. I'm your host, Jason Silverman, and I'm thrilled to share some time with you once again today. As you know, I am always, always on the hunt for interesting as well as super smart Real Deal guests, and i got to tell you, today's show is a winner. I want to introduce my listeners to somebody who's truly been there and done that, and I'm excited to pick her brain for your benefit today. Now, for the folks who I work with in any of my coaching program, my mastermind group, or through Powerful Words Character Development or All-Star Cheer Sites, You know how much I focus on the importance of developing your authority and your expertise, right? Well, the show is going to help us to do just that. So today it's going to be my honor and privilege to share an amazing resource with you. You're going to love today's guest. She's got a ton of valuable information about a super hot topic to help you succeed as well as a fun way to deliver it. So strap yourself in. Today's show is going to be a blast. As I'm sure you already know, I'm committed to helping business owners just like you to become more successful, enjoy your career more, and in general, make life significantly more fun. We only get one trip around this merry-go-round, and we want to make sure it's one hell of a ride. Alrighty, boys and girls, it is now that time. I want you to stop surfing Facebook, put away your phone, your tablet, your dog, your cat, your significant other, anything that might possibly distract you from today's show. You're about to get some great and immediately implementable information, and I don't want you to miss even a second. So, before we officially get going, let me give you a little bit of background about our guest today. International book marketer, executive book book coach, international speaker and author advocate, Nancy L. Erickson is known as the book professor because she helps everyday people write high-impact nonfiction books that will save lives, change lives, or transform society. Titles credited to her name include A Life in Parts, for which she received back cover endorsements from Sir Paul McCartney and Cindy Crawford. Through a methodology that she developed, Erickson leads her clients through the entire writing and publishing process, from the initial concept to a draft manuscript to a finished manuscript to a professionally published product to an internationally marketed product. Her clients include motivational speakers, a former U.S. Surgeon General, business leaders, civil rights proponents, public figures, and everyday people. She's a frequent speaker at industry conventions and author conferences about her passion to change the world one reader at a time. Erickson is the owner of Stonebrook Publishing, a small press she founded in 2009, and is the creator and owner of Book Karma, an international book marketing platform where authors help authors market their books globally through shared social networks. Erickson has presented her innovative ideas that are changing the face of publishing at both BEA and Frankfurt Book Fair, where she was a featured speaker in October of 14. Nancy, I'm thrilled to have you on The Real Deal. Welcome. Thank you, Jason. Thank you so much. My pleasure. So before we get started, you know, for those who haven't had the opportunity and pleasure of meeting you or hearing you speak, do me a favor. Take a second. Share your story with our listeners. What are you passionate about? What makes you tick? Who is Nancy Erickson? Well, thanks for asking that because we always have a why behind who we are and what we're doing. And I think that kind of like your audience, I came into what I'm doing a little bit sideways. Um, my actually, my original career was in high tech selling software for IBM and Oracle. But uh, I came to a point where in several years ago in the early 2000s, my dad was diagnosed with a terminal brain tumor. And so I clo- shut everything down, quit my job, and spent those next seven months with my folks until he passed away. And so when I came back, I, I thought, oh, my gosh, now what? You know, here I have this big empty life ahead of me, and I thought I could rewrite it however I wanted to. And I had always loved writing. I had had things, many things published when I was younger. And so I decided that, well, maybe I'll go back to writing. And so I went back to school, went to grad school, and got uh, my master's degree in writing, and then started teaching writing at the university I had graduated from. And this is where just following that one thing that comes to you at a time, just going where the path leads is so valuable because I had um, some people started coming to me who wanted to get their nonfiction books published. And so I thought, well, I can help this. And the first book I published 
was written by a Holocaust survivor who'd gone to school with Anne Frank. And it was a fascinating book. We actually did the book release at their school in Amsterdam. And then shortly after that, the book that you referenced um, called A Life in Parts, those authors came to me and I published that book too and um, got, like you said, back cover endorsements from seriously Paul McCartney, Cindy Crawford. I was like, this, can, you can't imagine how thrilling that was. So I, I really felt like I had these two incredible feathers in my cap and as a publisher and was just going down that road happily and then, and also teaching writing at the university level. And then all of a sudden I really felt God tell me to that stop, that that was a training ground for what my real work was, which is to help thousands and thousands of people get their amazing stories out so that they can be part of helping and healing um, other readers, just one reader at a time. So kind of like your audience, I, I was good at something, writing and producing books and that type of thing. And so I um, ended up going into the whole line of helping people who don't know how to write to write a book, a high impact nonfiction book. Wow. It, it, it's, this is, this is fabulous. You know, I, I love it when, when I hear people's stories that, you know, just take those kind of turns and bring them into something even bigger. Yeah. And, and that's so cool about the way, especially as an entrepreneur, we have that flexibility to go with the flow. And that's what I did, but I um, have ultimately um, landed where I am here. And my whole goal in life is that, because I know that people and certainly your audience are, they're entrepreneurs and they're working hard on their businesses and all and, and you know, trying to develop their brand, et cetera. And, you know, a lot of times we just, we don't know, we're so busy doing the thing that we do. We don't quite know how to get the word out on a widespread basis about how we can help others. But certainly when you have a book, you absolutely, you, you increase, you know, you establish, first of all, establish yourself as an expert in your field and you increase your, your credibility and attract a following. And I think that's something that most people would like to do and they don't even know that they have all those ingredients inside them right now just waiting to come out. Well, I think it's so important. I mean, I know personally, uh, I watched uh, when my wife's first book came out uh, and everything exploded, just actually how valuable and important a tool was. And quite honestly, I wish I had uh, known about you back then. Um, because that was like the most miserable process. Again, uh, without without a roadmap, everything. Well, hard. I know, and, and it's also because publishing is an industry. You know, I always tell people I would never start a bank. I don't know banking. I wouldn't start an insurance company. I don't know insurance. You know, but I do know publishing, and I can walk people through just the very inkling of an idea they may have all the way through the end product. Well, that is, I I, I can't wait to dig in. So. Let me let me dump in because I got I got a bunch of questions that I think personally I'd like the answers to and sure. I also I'm I'm pretty sure that all the folks eavesdropping on this conversation will find it valuable as well so I'd love your answer to this you know why should anybody actually think about writing a book I have my own thoughts but yeah well I, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts but mine are that um, you know people uh, it, it this kind of goes back to my whole motivation too is that. Our world, we have so many problems in our world. I mean, we really do. We just, and we don't even know how to name them anymore. It's so complex. But we do know the things that don't work. We know that the top-down approaches, like, you know, government can't seem to fix anything. And I don't want anybody to be offended, offended by this, but organized religion hasn't fixed things. And heaven knows we've tried to medicate our problems away. But they keep getting more and more complicated. But I know that we can solve our problems because the answers are trapped inside of people like you and like your listeners. And if you take the approach and look at your life and you say, you know, I may not know all that other stuff out there, but I know this one thing. I know this. And that simply with, by simply sharing your story, you can impact other people's lives. And there's a couple of things that I think that people really can't live without you know, other than the food, water, air, shelter thing. But those two things are hope and help. And when you tell your story, um, 
you give people hope. They see that you have come through something and out on the other side and have survived. And when you tell them how you did it, that gives them something concrete to grab onto that gives them real help. You know, a lot of times when people are in a rough spot in business or in their personal lives or, you know, other, you know, maybe they made it in the midst of circumstances that are just very difficult. You know, people say things to them that make them feel more alone, such as, you know, uh, this too shall pass. I mean, you know, how does that help anybody? You know, that makes you feel all alone. And another one is, another one is that sometimes people say, well, what doesn't kill you makes you grow stronger. And I'm like, well, you know what? Sometimes when I was in those really dark times, I thought, I don't want to get stronger. I'll just, just go ahead and take me. You know, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to grow through this. I don't need a growth opportunity. I need out, you know, but when you tell your story, when you do that, you share real hope with people and you get offer them real help that helps them know, you know, how you went from where you used to be to where you are now. Makes sense. Totally makes sense. Well, you know, I've, I've had the opportunity to speak with a number of folks um, and I, I remember watching my wife go through the process. So I have to ask, you know, how are you specifically different from other book coaches? Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad you asked this because there are a lot of good book coaches out there. And so that's a great question. And um, I, first of all, strictly deal with nonfiction. I think truth is, is, you know, more amazing than fiction. Although I'd love to read fiction, but one of the things that, you know, differentiates me is that I am a nonfiction coach. But I developed a process, Jason, because I think that most people who write nonfiction, they aren't writers. They're what I call livers. You're out living and doing things and accomplishing things. And you may not have, you know, writing skills. And that's okay. And so I developed a process where we start with just your inkling of an idea for your book. And through a series of foundational questions, we really pull the essence of the book out of you. And we crystallize your message into uh, actually into a purpose statement for the book. So we define the purpose of your book and who the audience is. And then everything in that book is going to drive to deliver that audience to the purpose. But I take you through this series of questions to crystallize your message. And then um, I developed a process called book mapping where we identify every element that's going to be in your book. And it's a visual rep representation of your entire book so that when you're ready to write, if you only have 15 minutes, you can pick out a small segment and write to that segment. And then we build your book brick by brick in, in that fashion. Huh. That's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. Well, it, it makes it, um, it's a step, kind of a step-by-step -step process, which is what you need to stay on track it keeps you from chasing rabbit trails and spending your wheels and, you know, spending a lot of time and money on things that aren't going to contribute to a product. Because in the end, the goal is for you to have a book that can stand shoulder to shoulder on the market with anything out there. And so, you know, this is the process that I developed that leads you to that point. Makes a lot of sense. Here's a question I got to believe that everybody is thinking right now, you know. Since fourth grade, I've never been a writer. So what if you're not a writer? You know, how, how are you able to get your ideas out there? Well, that goes back to that book mapping process that I was um, referring to. And one of the things that we do is we always want to present things we from the viewpoint of the reader. You don't want to push information on them. You want to provide things that they are looking for. And so we construct your book in what I call chapter silos. And these are problem solution sets. We name the problem that the reader might be having and then describe through a very story driven methodology how you solve this problem in your own life. So they see the problem. Let's see. So, um, give me an example. If you were to write a book, Jason, what would it be about? Uh, becoming an entrepreneur, perhaps? Uh, yeah, overcoming, taking, taking the plunge and leaving, uh, leaving a, a, a good paying job to become an entrepreneur. Okay, so let's play with that for just a second. So what would be some of the problems or barriers that people would have to do that? I would say one of them is, um, you know, no income. You know, that's a, that's a barrier. That would be a problem. And so we would, you know, have a chapter that said, quit my job. I won't have any money. You know, something like that. And then through a very story-driven process, 
you tell your story of how you did this and how you walked through this and what all your challenges were within that. And so that gives them hope that they can do it. They see you do it and help because there's some, some specific instruction in there and say, what would an, get, throw out another problem that a, a, might be a barrier to somebody? What will my wife say? Yeah. What will my wife say? Well, yeah, my, yeah, my, yeah, exactly. You know, and you do have to take into consideration the people that you are, you know, in relationship with. And so again, you would tell stories about, about how you navigated that and what that, what you all went through to get on the same page for that. So, but the point of this is, is why we're doing these in chapter silos is because at the end, and this goes back to how I differentiate myself. At the end of the process, and you have your book, and you let's say you've got 12 chapters that show the problem and name, name the problem and show your solution. At the end of it, it's really actually never about the book. It's about, and it's not about you either. It's about the change that you can create in the reader with your message. So at the end, when you have your book, your book actually becomes a launch pad through which you can deliver your message in multiple venues. Because let's face it, everybody's not going to write a book, but they could still be in your target audience. So you have your materials all organized and ready so that you can repurpose that material and blanket multiple venues. Like, you know, you, you'll have material for blog posts. If you want to lead a seminar or a workshop or create an online course or podcasts or, um, you know, articles, you know, speeches, that type of thing, your book becomes that platform that allows you to broadcast your message, you know, in different areas so that you can reach your audience where they're already engaged. Makes perfect sense. Totally makes perfect sense. So, you know, you, you started alluding to, to the process you do. What? Tell me how it really works. I mean, as far as somebody comes aboard and where do they, how does, how does, how does the whole thing work? Okay, yeah, I'm happy to tell you. Well, the the um, the program is called Get My Book Out, and actually, if you go to my website, thebookprofessor.com, um, I'm getting ready to launch a new program this fall, and there's a little bit of, of a waiting list that they can be added to. But it's a um, what I've done is I take you through the entire process, starting with your idea all the way through your finished manuscript. And I have developed a, uh, uh, a series of uh, instructional videos. And so it actually is in three separate modules. The first one's called From Concept to Concrete Plan. So what happens is you log into my website, into the course material, and I produce HD videos for each lesson. And there's a total of 42 lessons. So, um, and by the way, I want to sit on that for just a second because you know, it, you, you, you have a, a lesson a week. So 42 lessons, that's 42 weeks. That's almost a year. And a lot of times you'll see, this is another thing that differentiates me from people, other book coaches is that a lot of times you'll see, Oh, write your book in 90 days or in a weekend. And I, I just right up front, I have to say, I do not subscribe to that because if you are seeking to establish yourself as an expert and raise your credibility, you need to take the time to do it right. And there could be nothing more of a credibility killer than you might, you know, slap something together and throw it out. And people are like, well, I don't, this is yet crummy. You know, there's, this is not good. You know, that doesn't do anything for your uh, reputation. But so we take the time to do it right. And so we start off by this book mapping process and the way it works is that it's, you know, you log into the website, you watch the HD videos, there's handouts that for you to follow, and then you'll have a homework lesson each week to complete. And then the next week you progress to the next lesson. So the first part of it, the first 14 weeks is module one, and that's called from concept to concrete plan. And in that model, I mo module, I teach you how to pull these ideas out of you and how to organize your work into these book maps. But I also give you a lot of teaching about what the publishing industry is, what you can expect, what's coming down the road, what your budget should be, and how you can get these things accomplished. And all that is part of the first module. And then when you finish that, you just go right into the next one, which is module two. And that is called Write Without Ruts. And it, too, is 14 lessons. 
And that's where I put my teaching hat on. And I told you that I, you know, teach at the university level, but most of my people, I mean, most of my clients, I mean, none of them are writers. First of all, not one single one of them are writers and they're all, but they're all becoming authors and it's awesome. So module two, I give you a lot of teaching instruction about how to write well, how to write really compelling nonfiction that reads like fiction that really keeps people going. So that's all of module two. At the end of that, you have your first draft. And then module three, which is also 14 lessons, is called Polish and Perfect. And during that module, I teach you, I take you through some self-editing guidelines and teaching and lessons so that you can polish your own manuscript up to the best of your ability before you hand it over to a professional editor because every great writer has a great editor. That's a step that you absolutely can't skip, but you get it in the best possible shape as you can so that you're ready to hand it over to be professionally edited and published. Wow. 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 All right, so you're, you're talking almost a year-long process, which actually makes a lot more sense than the, you know, come here for two days and we'll uh, we'll suck a book out of your brain. Yeah, you know, I just writing writing is really hard work. It is, and when you're trying to communicate something that's really near and dear to your heart that you're really passionate about, you want to make sure you are taking the appropriate time to really. Um, formulate your thoughts and express yourself because uh, the other thing too is that it's something kind of magical happens during this whole process because while you're working on your book your book is actually working on you and you will pull things out of yourself that you didn't know were there and it, it's just such a great process and it really fuels it allows you to refuel your own passion for your work or your message and to get other people um, excited and on board with you too Makes sense. Makes sense. Here's a, uh, the business guy in me is always a, needs to ask this question. Do people really make money on their book? Well, some people do. Um, you know, everybody doesn't, you know, by the way, let me just throw in there. There are a million books a year published. And so what, so back to my point about if you want your needle to rise to the top of the haystack, you really need to make sure that you're putting something quality out there and that you work with professionals in order to do that. So for those people who think they're going to write a book and it, it'll, you know, it, it'll be like Field of Dreams. If I write it, they will come. That's not really the case. What your book ends up being for you is uh, not just a credibility piece, but something that really establishes you as an expert. And like I said, the value of working with me is we don't stop at the book because everybody's not going to purchase and read your book. The v big value is that we are in a, have a structure in place where you can take what you've already done and repurpose it across these many venues. And that will help you to attract an audience and to, you know, be established as an expert in your field. Yes, people do make money when they write books, but there are so many more layers to it, so many more purposes to um, having a book and um, to getting your brand out there and really expressing yourself and establishing yourself as the owner in your market. No, that makes total sense. Absolutely makes total sense. And or it's too, you know. I mean, I tell you what, when you have a book, you've really done something. It's so many people say, oh, I'm going to write a book, and, and they just don't do it because, first of all, part of the problem is, is they don't know how to get started, and how would you know how to if you've never done it before? You know, you won't know the first thing about it. So that's why the step-by-step -step process that I've developed is very helpful, and it actually saves you time, energy, money, etc. Totally makes sense. All right, it is time for our resource of the week. So tell me this, if you would. Where can my listeners find out more about you, about how you help folks to get these books out and on the shelves? Um, where can they uh, where can they connect with you? Well, the best way is on my website at thebookprofessor.com. And as I mentioned um, a little a few minutes ago, I am having people sign up for this new program. It's called Get My Book Out. And it's a, it's the uh, it's what I've been describing to you 
um, where it's a self-paced course where you step through step by step by step from your first idea to your final word. And so we are going to be launching that on uh, October 22nd. I would love to have your listeners be part of that. Fabulous. Okay. Now tell me about, I know there were a couple other websites though that they can find you. Yes. um, Another website is called bookkarma.net. That's B-O-O-K-A-R-M-A.net. And that's if you already have a book. That's, uh, um, I developed an international book marketing platform um, where authors help other authors market their books globally. So you you need to have a finished book to be part of that because it'll ask you for your ISBN number to get logged in. But we have authors from over thousands of authors from 42 countries who are helping each other market their books around the globe. Wow, I love that. I will I will be there the moment this uh, this interview is over. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> That's fabulous. And then your, I guess you want to talk about the link to your publishing? Yeah, stonebrookpublishing.net. That's the for the publishing company. Fabulous. All right. You know, I always like to end my podcast with one important question. So if you could give business owners just one solid piece of advice to either help their business or, more importantly, help them to live a better and more balanced life, what would that piece of advice be? Oh, wow. You know, I think that you need to work on yourself every day. And as entrepreneurs and business people, we often put ourselves last. But if you set a goal for yourself, and let's even say for writing this book, you know, I told you it's going to take a year. Well, that year is going to pass anyway. And so why don't you have something to show for it? Have a a product and something that you can be proud of to show for that. And it's important for us to not just tend to the nits and bites of our businesses, but actually to work on the bigger picture to help ourselves um, be more established as experts. I love that. Fabulous. Nancy, thank you so much for joining me today. I know how busy your schedule is, and it, it means the world to me that you share some of your experience and your wisdom with us. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. I know your podcast is making a huge difference, Jason. Thank you. Folks, that is all the time we've got today. Thanks so much for tuning in to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. For more info about private coaching or to see if you'd benefit from one of my mastermind groups, visit me over at www.jasonmsilverman.com. I look forward to helping you achieve the success that you truly deserve. Until next time, let me leave you with this. Get out there and be the real deal. Set a goal. Make a plan, work like hell towards it, and achieve the success that's waiting for you. Now's the time. Get out there and make it happen. Go get them, folks. This has been Jason Silverman, and I hope you have a spectacular week. You've been listening to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. To access the great resources mentioned in the show and for information on coaching and mastermind group opportunities with Jason, please visit JasonMSilverman.com.